Welcome back to County Connection. For this next segment, we're gonna be talking about noxious weeds, uh, some terrible plants that may be lurking in your backyard. And with us to uh, shed light on this important topic is Kyle Gilmore, the Assistant Program Manager for the Summit County Noxious Weed Control Program. Welcome, Kyle. Hi. Um, so Kyle, why don't you kick it off by telling us uh, what are noxious weeds and why should we care about them? So noxious weeds are plants that are not native to our area. Uh, they're mostly from Europe or Asia and they accidentally came over here and established themselves or they kind of came over as an ornamental that people thought were desirable plants for landscapes or gardens mm -hmm. and whatnot. And um, so since they're now in this area that they thrive in environmentally, they don't have any um, natural means of control. So okay. there's no bugs, there's no, um, you know, like I'm saying, like bugs and other methods that, that control those weeds. It, uh -huh. They're just not here and they're not present to control them. So they just, they spread like wildfire. Right. So whatever plants they were competing with in Europe or Asia or whatever mm -hmm. bugs like were eating animals, them. Animals, plants. Yeah. Um, so like for example, cows in Summit County, um, horses or even like chamomile, for example, it's just not a desirable plant that can actually cause um, like rashes and okay. blisters in their mouth and throat. So just certain animals just won't eat them uh, like they would in, in Asia or in Europe. So. Okay. And then from an environmental perspective, what's the concern with these types of plants being out there in the environment? So with these um, noxious and invasive plants in our area, since there are no means, natural means of control, um, they do spread like wildfire. So um, they'll overtake uh, desirable grasses and plants that the animals or livestock want to eat. Mm -hmm. um, so then like, yeah, like rangelands are covered with these non-desirable noxious weeds that um, animals won't eat and um, other native flowers and plants can't thrive or establish themselves because they're getting kind of, I guess out. you could say edged out, uh -huh. weeded out by these invasive species. Okay, and then, um, so what are the activities that your department is involved in related to noxious weed control? So our department's a small department, obviously, uh, it's a summer seasonal department. Um, we've got six people uh, on our team, um, two managers and four technicians, but we all pretty much go out in the county and we um, will identify and spray all of the noxious weeds that are actually um, uh, required by state law to control okay. in our um, county. Uh, right-of-ways, properties, um, etc. So, mm -hmm. so we go out there and we spray all the county properties, right-of-ways. Um, we do work for CDOT. Uh, we're actually doing some work for um, DREC this year, spraying the uh, perimeter of the Lake Dillon, okay. about 15 feet buffer off the shoreline. Um, we do the rec paths, and we also provide a backpack loaner program for the um, landowners, homeowners of Summit County that they could come and pick up a backpack and, and control their own weeds that we don't get on their property and do ourselves. Right, because you guys aren't going out on private property. Mm -mm. Um, you're going out on Summit County government property and exactly. any kind of partner agencies. Yeah, and the, I forgot to mention mun municipalities. So we do work for the town of Dillon, Silverthorne, Frisco, for example. Okay. And so we help control their weeds as well. So yeah, we're kind of all over the county and on our website, it kind of says that each week where we're at and what we're doing, so. All right. Yeah. Um, so some people may not know that they actually have some duties um, per state law related to noxious weeds on their own property. So mm -hmm. can you talk about what everybody should really know um, about noxious weeds as it relates to their own property? So, so we're not like out there trying to pinpoint certain properties or areas that they have to spray their weeds. Um, it's kind of a more of an educational type process that we mm -hmm. like to do, but we would like the homeowners and property owners to familiarize themselves with uh, Summit County's noxious weeds. And with that, if there's a problem, um, they can talk to adjacent property owners or homeowners, come up with a plan, talk to us, call me and uh, try to control their noxious weeds. Um, because at one point you could, um, 
I guess, legally be liable for all of your noxious weeds that you have on your property. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've seen some educational pamphlets and books mm -hmm. and publications, and it's a pretty long list of all the yeah. noxious weeds, unfortunately, that are in Colorado mm -hmm. and in Summit County. Um, but if you can let us know, what are the top five that people really need to w watch out for and that are problematic and likely to be found uh, in our yards? Okay. Uh, so I guess the top five, start with chamomile. Um, it's an annual, it's a noxious weed. It grows like three to four feet tall and it's got like daisy-like flowers and mm -hmm. it's really pretty, but it, like I said, with noxious weeds, it spreads like wildfire uh -huh. and now competes the natives um, that we do want to be there and don't spread like wildfire and that our environment and natural habitats um, use um, to thrive, so. Right. And so with that one, it, um, there are some benevolent daisies out there mm -hmm. um, and that you do see in gardens that, that aren't noxious and don't yeah. spread to that degree. So can you talk a little bit about the defining characteristics of chamomile versus some of these other daisies that aren't so problematic? So it's, it is easy to, I guess, misidentify um, chamomile to other um, daisies. And or for example, say oxide daisy, it's a noxious weed. And uh, Shasta daisy is not. So with the um, oxide daisy, the actual leaf is one of the main determining factors on how you can identify that. But with chamomile, uh, it's, it's fairly easy to identify that one. And uh, if you were to go on our website and check it out or even just Google um, uh, chamomile, uh, you can easily kind of identify that in your yard. Right. And because it has a very kind of distinctive lacy yeah. type of leaves. And I'll provide some pr pictures for you guys. but. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's like a daisy. It's really pretty, but it, uh, like I said, it spreads like wildfire, and um, it can produce up to one million seeds that are oh viable gosh. for I think six years. So, oh wow! So it's kind of hard to control, and you kind of have to stay after it. And it's pretty good that uh, the county has us uh, doing this for years um, to control the weeds here in Summit County. Great. Okay, what's number two on our most wanted list? I don't know if we could say number two, but as five, um, I guess the other four real quick, Canada thistle, musk thistle, um, common mullein and oxide daisy, like I mentioned. But to talk more about Canada thistle, it's a perennial noxious weed. It grows a foot to five feet tall um, and it has pinkish flowers. Uh, so it, it'll reproduce by its roots, also by seed, which I think it, each plant can produce like 500 seeds. And those are viable for 20 years. Oh, wow. Um, but because of the extensive root system, it's best to manage the weeds with an herbicide. Because if you pull it up, then they'll just reproduce via uh, the roots. Okay. So that's a pretty bad one. Um, so if you see that thistle and mm -hmm. yank it off and you don't see anything above ground. The, It'll come the, back. The, right. Okay. Every year. Um, so that's a bad one. And real quick to mention too, there's a lot of native thistles that are good for the area that uh, the elk and other um, animals like to, um, to eat and thrive on. So it's good to know that not all thistles are bad. Okay. But another bad one is a musk thistle. And a musk thistle is a biennial weed and it can grow up to seven feet tall. Oh wow. And it's got a deep rose purplish flower and it can produce uh, 10 to 100,000 seeds per plant. Um, and those seeds can be viable for up to 10 years. And that's just another undesirable thistle um, that kind of outcompete the native um, mm -hmm. landscape that's in that area. And um, you can yeah. actually pull or uh, mechanically remove that thistle because it is a biennial, so okay. it's got a two, two year life cycle. So it doesn't have that big established root system? That... Not as much, no. Okay. So you could. You could do it without chemical, but uh, if you have a large infestation of it, it's probably best to either hire a contractor to come in or um, you could get a backpack sprayer from us and, okay. and take care of it yourself by just spot spraying the thistles. And I've got a picture of the, the rosette where you see them first establishing and then the full fledged plant with the flower on it. Okay. Do you have any, um, are there any real obvious characteristics of these two thistles um, that differentiate them from the native thistles? 
Uh, it's, it's pretty tough and I actually, we have some literature at our office that you could come by and it's, we have a pretty good thistle book that shows the differences between native and non-native thistles. But uh, I guess for me, Canada thistle, they kind of grow in, in groups. Okay. Um, and just once you see one and you get to know one, you, you can tell. And with the musk thistle, it's a, a large plant with kind of a wide, wider edge on the thing. And um, yeah, you can kind of identify them that way. But it's until you kind of educate yourself, get mm -hmm. on Google, or like I said, get on our website, or you stop by the office and grab some literature, you kind of have to, to do some research to, to easily identify uh -huh. one or the other. Okay, so a little homework on the mm -hmm. thistles. For sure. Okay, what else is I on that I guess the list? other one is common mullein, and it's real popular and going like crazy down in the Denver area, oh. and lower elevation, but it's becoming more of a problem up in Summit County. Um, it's a biennial noxious weed, and the first year it just has a low-growing rosette, which I have a picture of, and it's about five inches wide, that first rosette, and it's got a uh, felt-like leaf with a bluish-green color to it, tint uh -huh. to it. But in the second year, uh, the flowering plant produces um, a plant that's five to 10 feet tall, and that includes that big flower spike oh, wow. that you could see in the plant. Um, and the big thing with this weed, it can produce up to 200,000 to a half million seeds. And those seeds are viable for, I think, what is it, 100 years in the soil. So once those seeds get spread, it, it, can, it can spread like wildfire, like I've been saying. Right. And like you can continually be um, managing those weeds because those seeds are so viable and there's so many out there from one plant. Um, and I think I kind of touched base on each five, but, um, but yeah, that's, there's more than just the five. Sure. But those are, I guess you could say the top five in the county. Okay. Um, and certain areas of the county have more species of one weed than another. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty easy once you educate yourself and once you see it to, to identify the, the top five. Okay, great. Um, so um, if you could tell us a little bit more about, excuse me, the backpack sprayer program and mm -hmm. how people can utilize that. And um, certainly we don't want to be blanketing our landscape with yeah. herbicide willy nilly, um, mm -hmm. but some targeted applications yeah. um, are beneficial for all the reasons you've mentioned. So can you talk about how that program works and how people can take advantage of it? So we have five backpacks at the county um, at our office that we can hand out to people and for our offices are open Monday through Thursday. Um, we're there 6.30 to 5, but we have backpack pickups at 7 o'clock in the morning or 4.30 in the evening. Okay. Um, you actually just call me and I can provide you the information um, on the screen here. And Call me or email me and I'll get you set up and if there's one available and um, the schedule works out, I can have you pick up a backpack and we'll do a quick five minute kind of education on the sprayer, safety, what your con um, what you're trying to manage and just any other questions you might have um, one of our six people will will help you out and and get you going and uh, we provide the backpack like I said with the herbicide all you have to do is go home fill it up with three gallons of water and we pretty much recommend just a spot spray certain areas if it's a large stand with no other natives around it then you could spray um, that whole area, but mm -hmm. pretty much in what we're doing in the county, we're just spot spraying. We're not just boom spraying, widespread spraying, because we do want to limit the herbicide. Um, and it is expensive, so. Right. We try to, to do our best with that. And uh, we actually allow people to come twice a year to pick up a backpack and. Um, Great, so any Summit County resident is eligible? Yeah, any Summit County resident. And I'll ask you on the phone if, uh, you know, if you're trying to target, um, I can't think of it now, but um, dandelions. Oh. We don't hand out backpacks for dandelions. I mean, they're everywhere. It's not technically a noxious weed. Um, so if you have chamomile, thistles, great. Um, but if it's just for dandelions, we, we typically don't hand out a backpack for that. It's, it's for more of the top five noxious weeds that are in the county. Right. All right. Um, Kyle, is there anything else that folks should know about your program or noxious weeds in general? No, I think 
I think that's about it. Um, yeah, you could easily call me or, or my boss, Ben Plyman, who uh, manages the whole department. Um, we can help you out with any questions that you might have, or um, we, we talk to HOAs, other um, parts of the community and on education. So if, Great. if people want further education, contact us, and we'd be willing to come out and, and do some presentations or talk to people about that. Um, but yeah, we're here to help out. and. Pretty much outside, you'll see us uh, in our trucks and our ATVs spraying all the noxious weeds in Summit County. Fabulous. All right, and how should people get in touch with you? So you can get a hold of me the best way is to call me, 970-668-4252. Uh, okay. Or to email me. Um, and everything's actually on the Summit County website. Great. So just go to the Weed Control Department um, webpage and all the contact information is there. And also the Backpack Loaner Program for information noxious weed information, all kinds of good stuff on the website. So um, if you didn't hear the, the phone number or the email, I'm sure it'll come up on the screen. But yeah, get a hold of us. And uh, like I said, we're here to help out and educate and spray all the weeds in, in the county. All right, let's go get some weeds. Yeah, all right, <laughs> thanks for having me. All right, thanks for coming in, Kyle. Stick with us, we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have one of our local heroes from Summit County Ambulance Service join us.